Let's make some noise for Jesus tonight. Let's make some noise for Jesus. God is so good. It's good to be here with you guys tonight back here. You guys are looking awesome. Come on. Y'all going to be my, the, the amen corner in the back? Or something? This is going to take forever. Let's keep going. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. Okay. Back to work. Okay. I'm back. I, I am so blessed to be here. Um, JCTV means a ton to Darlene and I and the revolutionary life. We are missionary evangelists. We travel the world and we preach the gospel of Jesus Christ from one side of the globe to another. And I want to tell you a little secret. I really, really like doing it. It's a great job and it's good to be here. And JCTV has literally amplified our work. Where we would be preaching to thousands, we're now preaching to millions. And I'm so thankful for this network. But I was thinking, what would be the one thing that I would want to talk to so many people at one time about? I'm, I'm, I'm an evangelist at heart. I'm a missionary at heart. So I was thinking, what would it be? And I got to tell you, it's, it's Jesus. This network is to put Jesus out there. Our job is to turn people's eyes toward Jesus. So tonight, we're just going to take a few minutes. I want to get into the Word just really quick, tell you a long, amazing story of what God is doing. Do not change that channel. Get on our Facebook. Get on our Twitter and connect with us and listen to what the Word of the Lord may be saying to you tonight. I'm going to read to you out of Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. Hebrews 12, 1 and 2 says this. It says, Therefore we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Y'all see T-Bone take off running a while? He almost took me out over there, you know? Anyway, set before us, looking, this is important, looking unto Jesus the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, thank you, Father, despising the shame and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. That is Hebrews 12, 1 and 2. And the, the part I want to focus on tonight is looking unto Jesus. Now looking unto any other way, other place, but looking unto Jesus we travel all over, and one of the places we do a lot of work, and one of the nations that we love so much is actually India. We love going to India. We have friends in India that are our closest pals, man. We have friends in India and Nepal. In fact, on the Facebook a while ago, one of our friends from Nepal said, I'm watching JCTV right now. And I'm like, hey, man. Hey, Lako, how you doing, man? Anyway, and we preach the gospel in places where there are no churches um, really, really far out there. One story in particular that just, it stuck with me, and I learned a lifelong lesson from it. This story happened in the south part of India, and it's away from all the church areas. It's a group of about five villages, and these five villages, other churchless, and they're different social systems, different castes, so they don't really interact with each other. Well, my friend Emmanuel in the south, he said, I wanted to plant the first religious center. There was no mosque there. There was no temple there. There was no kind of religious center. He said, I want to plant the first church. So he built this little building, this little bitty brick building, and he said, we're going to plant the first church. And he called us one day when we were in India and said, come, let's preach the gospel. So we go down there and we're like, hey, let's, uh, let's preach the gospel. What's the message? Jesus. So we're going to preach Jesus at this place. We get there and it's a small place and it slowly fills up. I was walking down the street on the way there, and there's this big sign with my big old head on it, and it's, it said in a different language that we we're going to pray for the sick. So by the time we got there, it was full of people who were desperate. They were hurting, and they needed a touch from the Lord. So we got in there, and we started preaching Jesus. I mean, that's what we do. Jesus, you know, he came in the flesh. He was crucified. He's resurrected. And as we always do, that's what I preached. And then at the end, Darlene and I were going to pray for the sick. So we said, okay, anybody who's sick, we'd like to pray for. And everybody came up to the front. And we, we prayed for each one of them. It took a long time just praying and praying. And, and then afterwards, I do the same thing all the time. What, um, has anybody got a testimony? Tell me. If God has touched you, tell me if he's healed your body. So I, I, I did that that day, and something happened that never has happened before. Every time in India when we do this, there are people that come up. It happens every single time. But this time when I said that, okay, come forward and give us a testimony. I want it to come out of your own mouth. Nobody moved. It was just, you could have, cricket, cricket. It was so quiet. It makes you real uncomfortable. <laughs> no, no, maybe they didn't understand what I said. But for the first time in our ministry's history in that part of India with our dear friends down there, for the first time nobody came forward. 
and it broke my heart. So I went back to our little guest house and I hit my knees on the side of the bed and I started repenting for stuff that I didn't even do, you know? Just did I do something that could keep God's power from flowing freely through me? And the Lord revealed to me, I didn't hear a voice in my heart. He revealed to me something that Brother Emmanuel had kind of spoken that this part of India and this area where we were was a little different and that they were used to doing things a certain way. When they got sick, they went to their priest or they went to their witch doctor and they brought a little money and they gave it to, to the priest and the priest did some stuff. I don't know what they do. And then they said, okay, you're better, you know, leave. And they would go back and that's the way they operate. Well, as I preached, the Lord, as I prayed that night about the preaching, the Lord revealed to me that they were looking at me in the same way. And that scared me, you know. You don't want to be that person who's like getting the attention away from God. You want to point everything to Jesus. So I'm repenting. I'm sorry, Jesus. Don't, don't kill me. I don't know. And it, it hit me. And the Lord said, no, no, no. You've done it like you always do. But you're going to have to step it up a notch. You're going to have to on purposely point them to Jesus. So we went back the next day, and it got ridiculous. I was sitting there, and I'm like, okay, if you guys look at me on accident tonight thinking I'm a magic priest or something, we're all going to go home and be agitated. We're going to be disappointed because we're going to get nothing. So as I, as I said that, I went on and on and on and on and on. And by the end of the night, I was going, so who's the healer? And they would go, yes, Sue. And I'd say, who's the healer? Yes, Sue. Until they were literally like laughing at me. Okay, we get the point. It went for about 30 minutes of me going, who's the savior? Yes, Sue. N- not, not anybody, no human, Jesus. And they were like, yes, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus is the savior. And that night, we prayed for the sick. And the, the, it went all the way out. The line of people who came forward that were healed went all the way out to the door. Just when I was able to turn their eyes from looking at a man to looking at Jesus, Jesus showed up and showed out because that's what Jesus does. I think about my life and I think about all of the things that I have put in the place of Jesus. Like when, before I got saved, uh, I, was a very, I was a very depressed young man. I was 16. I grew up in Mississippi. Come on, somebody out in Mississippi. There's like three of y'all, but y- y'all the best people here. I'm just kidding. California, got to watch these people. Now, I, I grew up down there, and I was a very upset, depressed young man. And I wanted freedom. I wanted to feel free. But I was putting my attention on girls at that young age. I was putting my attention on music and alcohol, even at that age, I was doing this stuff. I was one of those people who was so miserable inside. I actually cut myself. And I was, what I was trying to do was relieve the pain. And I didn't see myself as valuable. And then one day I got invited to a youth camp. And when I got there, they somehow got me to turn my attention from all these other things, from all these television stations, from all these bad bands I was listening to. And I turned my attention to Jesus. And when I turned my attention to Jesus, he literally changed my life in an instant. Since then, in fact, it was the next night. I just remember that. It was the next night I walked into uh, this big video place, and we had a big church service, and they played one of those mission videos, one of those that make you cry, kind of like our television show, The Revolutionary Life. We make everybody cry. You know, it's like, oh, I love your show. I'm like, you're not acting like you love my show. What's the deal? The thing is, it was one of those videos, and when I watched the video, get this, when I watched that video, it broke my heart, and I responded to the call of missions. Because I turned my eyes from all these other things to Jesus. And I will tell you that that choice, that choice right there changed the direction of myself. And I would not be standing on this stage talking to you about Jesus. I would not be on television preaching Jesus. I wouldn't be traveling the world and living in corn shacks and eating dog and all this different stuff that we've done for the kingdom. If it wasn't, some of y'all are like, that doesn't sound good at all. <laughs> Well, that's the thing. I love it. And I would not be living what I consider a revolutionary life, a fulfilled life, if I wouldn't have took my eyes off of all these things and took them to Jesus. And if we look unto Jesus tonight, there's a lot of stuff begging for your attention. But if you will look unto Jesus, if you will take your eyes off of all the circumstances of what's going on, if you will take your eyes off of those other stations that are just filling you full of stuff that depress you, and you will look unto Jesus, tonight Jesus will change your life. 
I'm going to see how many times I can say the name of Jesus to the millions of people watching because I want you to know that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus is our healer. Jesus is our Savior. The gospel is the only way we can be saved. And I want you to know that because I want your life to be a fire. I want your life to be a torch that other people can run to. This network is actually a torch for millions around the world to point them to Jesus. And right now, I know some of you at home. In fact, I was praying about this for days, about this few minutes I would have to share with you. And in my mind's eye, I saw young people. Right now, I'm talking to you. Right now, young people are depressed, some of them. Some of you watching, you're wondering if anybody even cares about you. You wondered if a good God was there, why, is all, why are all these things happening? You're looking at the storm. There's a, there's a story in the Bible where Peter gets out on the water, and as soon as he takes his eyes off of Jesus, he starts sinking. You're looking at these other things, and you feel like you're drowning. You feel like you're not going to make it. And I'm here tonight as a messenger, as your friend, as a friend, a family member from JCTV. I'm here tonight to tell you to turn your eyes. Tonight, you turn to the right station. You, re- you found the right place to be listening to. And hear the word of the Lord that he loves you so much that he gave his only begotten son. That if you believe in him right now, in the audience, up here, anybody, whatever your position, whatever people know you for, if you will believe in him, he will revolutionize you. When I was praying very uh, specifically, I saw in the spirit... I was praying about young people who were cutting themselves and were depressed. I was praying about young men who think that life, they should model this television or this rapper or, or this person. I was praying about them very specially. And in fact, while I was doing so, the Lord flashed a picture of a, of a middle-aged uh, lady. I think in around her 40s in my spirit. And she's depressed and cutting herself. This is what God hates, my friend. He loves you so much. If I could just impart one thing to you, it would be the love of God. Because he wants to remove fear. He wants to remove that feeling that you are worthless. But we've got to change right now. Just like I stood in front of India and I'm like, who's the healer? Who's the savior? I'm saying it. Who's it going to be for you? Who are you looking at? And I'm begging you right now to turn your eyes away from those things. Some of you, as we know from our social media, are watching from other countries. Listen, there are idols all on those. In that same meeting, there was a man. Um, He came in and rarely have, have I seen a display of despair as much as the way he looked. He came in literally hunched over, and our whole team noticed him when he walked in. He was, a, he was just a very small, small man, just broken. And he came in, and we all said hello, and he came up to the front, and he sat down on the straw mat, and he sat there, and at the end of the service, he came back up. He stood up, and he came down to receive Jesus. And then the next night, he came back smiling a little more. And the third night, God healed his body. He had some major chest pains, and he said the chest pains stopped. And then we get in the car, and I had preached six or seven times this Sunday, this weekend, and I was sitting in the car, and I was utterly exhausted. I was tired. So I'm sitting in the car just like, (laughs) T-Bone jumped on the thing. I'm sitting in the car literally just tired. And suddenly the car stops in the middle of a village. And I look up, and there's this skinny little man staring at with his big, goofy grin. And I'm like, what is going on? <laughs> so you, you must come bless his house. So I'm like, at first I'm like, Darlene, Emmanuel, y'all go do it. I'm going to sit here and take a nap. But I realized that wasn't godly. So I got up out, out of my chair and in the car, and I walked inside. And along his walls were just pictures of idols. And I looked at him, and my heart broke because I realized so much oppression, so many things he in confidence, which I would never say, in confidence told us was a result of these things oppressing him and hurting his life. He was praying to something that could not help him. And the best those things you can do, the, the best they could do, those idols you've made out of those pop stars, those idols of those celebrities, the best they can do is put bad ideas in your head if they're not serving God. And the same way he was praying to these, and in my heart, I'm going to be very compassionate. And I say, I want you to pray, brother. I want you to pray. 
and ask God if he would have you remove these idols. Because I want him to learn to hear from God. And he sits there and he goes, no problem, they're gone. And his poor wife, she wasn't at the meeting. She was like, what? What is going on? And he changed his life that day. Let's turn our eyes away from things that can't help us. Let's turn our eyes away from junk that hurts you. Oh, I hear this by the Spirit. Right now, there are some people, the music you listen to, you say this sentence about it. You say, it, I can identify with it. It knows where I'm going. And the word of the Lord to you, I feel right now, is that's not identification. That's pushing you further into the hole that the enemy wants to push you in. It's not identification. Rather than stay in the hole, it's time that you listen to something that will lift you out of that hole. See, David said he was in a pit, and the Lord lifted him out. Jesus will lift you out, even tonight. So in this next five minutes, just a few minutes now, what I want to do is I want to pray for you. You're being struck at the heart. You're feeling this. It's like a hollow feeling, like a, like a, like a butterfly is in your stomach right now. Because the Lord is drawing you, the Holy Spirit is drawing you through these cameras into your home and from your computer. Maybe you're watching on your cell phone. I want to pray for you. And I want you in your heart to turn your heart's eyes away from all that junk, away from the worthless idols, and turn your eyes to Jesus. If you're sick in your body, right where you are, I want to pray for you. I've seen God do miracles that just, just baffles the mind. I want to pray that you would stop looking at all these other things. We believe in doctors. God bless doctors. But I want you to put your faith in Jesus for your healing. The Bible says by his stripes we were healed. And I know he wants to touch you. Here in, here in the audience tonight, God will minister to you in the same way he's ministering to these people on television. Just listen to the voice of the Lord and let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, and by no other name do we come to you. It is this name that people can be saved. So in the name of Jesus, I ask you to move upon people's hearts. I ask you right now, that person who is desperately turning their eyes away from circumstances and tur turning to you, that you heal their body, that you heal their spirit, that you heal their soul. And like you did for me, my wonderful Savior, change the direction of their life and send it into the direction of revolutionary, abundant life in you, God. Fulfill them. Give them that water, God, that they will be forever satisfied. And right now, look at me. If you've never given your heart to Jesus, this is the most exciting part to me of everything we get to do here tonight. Say this. Say, God, Jesus, I know that I have done wrong. I know that I have sinned. I made major mistakes. I need help. And I believe in my heart that you came in the flesh, that you died in my place, you took my punishment, and then you were raised to life. Come in. Make me new again. Right now, I turn my eyes from all these other things, and I turn my eyes to Jesus. I turn my eyes to you, Jesus. I give you all of me, every piece, holding nothing back, absolutely all. I give you my past, and for the forgiveness, I receive forgiveness. I give you my future, and I say, you're my master. Thank you. Make me new. In Jesus' name, I pray. And right now, you can look to the Father, and you can say, you no longer do you have to say God. Now you can say Father. Uh, a Muslim's watching right now. I feel this. That's the difference. You can know him personally, and he will take you in as his child. God is not so distant. He wants to know you intimately. And he, that mediator, there's one God and one mediator between God and man. That's the man, Christ Jesus. So if you prayed that, get on the phone. The phone number's like, right, wait, where it is? Right here. Check that out. Call us. Let us know. And you know what? Help us. Help us at JCTV. Take an entire generation's eyes and take their eyes from looking at all this other stuff and turn those eyes to Jesus. Amen. Right now we're going to.